Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Visitor Studio to do a quick video to let you know that we've compiled all OBS transition pack for DaVinci Resolve into one bundle. It contains eight different pack with very different styles. For the occasion, we've created a special sample bundle with one transition from each pack. Today I'll share with you how to install them and get the most out of them. So if you're ready, let's get into it. All right, you can download the transition bundle sample by clicking the link in the description below. You will get you the zip file, just double click on it to unzip it. In the folder, you have a couple of things. You have the license, the installation instruction, and the TRFX file. Just double click on the TRFX file to start the installation process and select install. Once in DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to Effect, Video Transition, Video to Studio, and then here you will find the transition bundle sample. So you'll find the eight different transition right here. We're gonna go through each one of them one by one and the different functionality that they have. But if you want to have more in-depth explanation, uh, there is actually a video for each one of them available on the channel. So I will link to all of those directly in the description below if you want to check that out. So let's start by applying that film burn transition sample. I'm gonna take it and here drag it in between my two clips in my timeline. But as you can see, nothing is happening. It's because we need to trim the edges of our clip to give it enough space for the transition to be applied. So let's zoom in a little bit so we see what we're doing. We're gonna trim the edges of that clip and trim the edges of this one, bring them back together. And now we can just take the transition and apply it. And as you can see, it's working fine. Now let's play it and see how it look. Nice, perfect. That's exactly what I want for that kind of context. Right now I'm getting real time playback, but if that's not the case for you, you can always go over to playback, run the cache, and then here select smart. That will just bring that red bar right above the transition going from red to blue. And when the transition has turned fully to blue, that means it has been cached in and you'll be able to get real-time playback if that was not the case already. One important note with transition is that you need to make sure that they are complementing your footage and that they are not just random. That's why you have a very different style to suit different type of context. Right now, we have a film burn transition that works fairly well with the tone of our footage. And also we get some direct light hitting our sensor right here, which can justify for like a light click. So that makes sense. The transition just feel justify and it work visually in my opinion. So always consider the tone, the style of the video that you try to apply the transition on. Also the different movement, we're gonna see that later on uh, and also the timing. So for example, right here, the timing seems to be fine, but for some transition, they might need to be longer or they might need to be shorter. As you can see right now, as I'm extending the transition or reducing the transition, those changes are reflected in the inspector in second and in frame. So you can see exactly the of time the transition going to be display for. Now for the look of this transition, there is a few things that we can modify. Here we have the color and we have the glow. I'm just going to expand my inspector so we can see what we're doing. First off, I can change the color right here. So if I wish, I can just select here something more towards the red, depending again on the color of my footage. And then you can adjust the glow uh, right here by reducing the glow threshold or increasing that glow threshold. Making those modification will give you very different results. For example, if for my light leak, I would like to have tones that are a bit more towards those orange right here, I could just select here the picker and then select whatever color I have on screen. Perfect. Now, because it's a bit brighter, it's a bit too yellowish for me. So maybe we're gonna reduce the gain to have it being a bit softer and we're gonna increase the glow size a little bit. And that way right now we have a light leak that is matching a lot more the ambient light that we had uh, during that shoot right here. By doing that, you get something that is matching the color of your footage a bit more. Uh, it doesn't matter if that's maybe the light or maybe some elements in your frame that will just help blend everything together properly. All right, so we have our first transition. Now let's move on to the next one. But first, if you enjoy a specific transition here in the sample bundle, you can always click check out the full pack on our website and it will guide you directly to the product page where you can find the full pack that contain 20 transition in that specific style. So for the second transition, we're gonna apply the glitch transition sample. And right here, we have it placed in between our two clip. Those kind of transition, in my opinion, tend to work better when they are shorter. So something like six to 12 frames. So I'm gonna reduce that to maybe eight frame. Now let's play it. It looks a lot better, I think. 
generally for transition like this one, or for example, the visual blend transition, where we're flashing thing in front of the viewer eyes, you don't want to keep them for too long because it feels maybe a bit too hectic and it's just better to have it just as a quick flash, in my opinion. For those kind of transition, there is two main components that you can adjust. There is the movement strength or the shake strength, and there is the blending mode. The blending mode gonna really change depending on the footage that you are using and also uh, on the type of visual that are displayed in front of the footage. Right now we are in pin light, but for example, we could select something like difference and we will get a completely different result. So that's always interesting to just play around and see what fits your footage best. Then the movement strength is basically the displacement that gonna occur uh, while that transition is being applied. So right here, as you can see, if I increase it, gonna have like more movement happening while the transition is being displayed above the footage. Now for the third transition, the pan and tilt whip. It's a basic pan or tilt whip as mentioned in the name, uh, which basically gonna go either uh, up or down, left or right. And then you can choose a few other things like the edge reflection to be either mirror or wrap. And you can also adjust the blur strength and choose for different animation timing. So this is different type of curve. You can choose, for example, an expo curve or like a thin curve, etc., for the in and out. So right now, as you can see, it's up, but I could choose to have a left, for example. And right now we're gonna switch basically the direction of that transition. We can also adjust the overall blur strength. So here I can increase that. And now we're gonna have a blur that is a lot more consequent. I would not recommend to go too high. So stay at, I think a maximum of 1.5. Otherwise it's getting too much and we cannot really see anything anymore. Now for the fourth transition, we get a panel transition. So it's basically a panel coming down, but you can choose the different direction. So right now it's coming down by default, but you can choose to have it coming from the left side, the right side and up or down as shown earlier. You can also choose the panel width. So here you can either reduce that panel width or increase it and you can change the color of that panel. So here you can take, for example, your color picker and you can uh, select a shade of blue and you could have that being the color of the panel. Now the fifth is going to be a paper rip transition. You can choose between five different style. So here you have one where uh, you can see actually the texture of the paper. There is some that have uh, the paper itself, another that have the paper being solid, but on the other clip and then one that is just the rip edges. The cool thing with this one is that you can actually choose between a lot of uh, different textures. So here we have crinkle, but you could choose to have, for example, newspaper. Uh, there is just a bunch, I think 18 different textures that you can choose from. So that can really be useful depending on the type of footage that you're using, especially here when you have, you know, that blending mode, just playing around with different type of texture will yield very different results depending on the type of footage that you have. And then you have a bunch of other parameters. For example, you can flip the paper. You can also adjust so many little details about the edges. Uh, so I have a full video where I go in detail about that. If you want to check that out, that will be in the description below. Now we have the shadow tilt transition, which is basically a simple up or down transition with a black fade. So here you can choose to have it either uh, up or down. You can switch that with that toggle right here. You can also change the color of that fade. Right now, by default, it's black because it's supposed to be a shadow but you can choose to have a specific color if that's matching your project better. Then we have the slice transition. This one is fairly simple. You can just adjust the angle of it. So that's this one. And then lastly, we get the visual blend transition. So this one, similar to the glitch transition, it's better to be for a short period on screen. So six to 12 frame is the sweet spot in my opinion. I really like this one. That's probably my favorite. Uh, I think it looks really, really cool. You can play with the blending mode to get different kind of results. So here we are in color dodge, but for example, we could select again difference or exclusion and it will just yield very different results, which is really, really cool because with one single transition, you can do just so many different things. If for example, the effect is too strong, you can reduce the gain to see through a bit more uh, the footage and you can play also around with the shape displacement and the shape smoothness. The shake displacement is all for the footage is going to drift off. And the shake smoothness is if you want it to basically drift off uh, smoothly just to, you know, a side of the frame, or if you reduce it to the minimum, it's just going to jump around the frame uh, in like a random fashion. 
And that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful and you'll enjoy using those transitions. Again, if you enjoy those transitions, you can get the individual pack available on the website or you can get the full bundle now with those eight pack uh, combined in one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.